Wow, it's like an ice rink over here. Okay, let me tell you a story. Since I was a child, I had eczema all over my body. I remember always feeling itchy and dirty as well. I felt horrible and, and felt ugly, like no one found me attractive. I wanted to compensate this and I um, yeah, thought if I could become the best at something, I wanted to be, um, everybody f would find me attractive and found me, yeah, yeah, would love me. So I decided to become the best in the world in skating. I wanted to become like Rintje Ritsma. He was the, the Olympic champion in skating. I wanted to be just like him. And um, yeah, actually, he was quite handsome as well. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I wanted to become on, on, on TV and I, I wanted to become famous just like Rintje. That was my belief. But then, in a feminine way, of course. <laughs> anyway, I had a mission I wanted to accomplish. That was my belief. I, since that moment, I put 150% into that goal. As a 12-year-old girl, I already trained 20 hours a week. I went to school, did my homework, and got back to training again. When fellow schoolmates played outside and had fun together, I was training. I had a mission I wanted to accomplish no matter what. Um, I, since that moment, I got a high level of success and I became a member of a national short track team. And, well, it was tough. Something always was standing in my way. I had problems with sitting deep enough during, yeah, due to stiffness in my ankles. And due to my trainer, I, or my trainer thought I was too heavy. With the result, I trained five hours a day on a bike to lose weight. I also drank half a liter of water before every meal so that I ate less and, yeah, so that my stomach was filled so I ate less. Uh, I even went to a physiotherapist in The Hague, which was a three hour train ride. And, um, yeah, it, he, he was fixing my ankles. So all these efforts brought me success but also a battle with an, yeah, an increasing number of injuries. It was tough, but I don't want to give up and I want to go, go on. But when fellow teammates were making progress, I was struggling and I was recovering from my injuries. And um, therefore it became harder and harder to get a spot in the Olympic team. Um, my last chance to get a spot in the Olympic team was during the trials for the World Cups in uh, the Olympic season. And I was in qualifying position, but at that moment a competitor wanted to pass me, but got imbalanced and moved her arm like this and cut me in the face. I fell with a concussion at result. I couldn't finish the competition anymore and my dream was over. I couldn't do anything anymore for two weeks, and I was totally collapsed. And however I couldn't um, yeah, recover in that two weeks, I wanted to compete again, and I wanted to skate again, since it was the Olympic season. And I tried really hard, but even then I, got, I faced setback after setback, and, then, and at the end I had five major injuries, like a bruised ankle, a dislocated shoulder, a bruised neck, and a concussion. It was really hard, and actually my body was telling me something. It was giving me a sign, since your body never lies, right? So I decided to, yeah, I needed to make a decision. And that moment of that decision, I'll never forget. It was Friday, the 19th of December, 2009. I was laying on the couch in the living room, and I couldn't stop crying. I just decided to quit short track speed skating. It was everything for me. It was my identity. And for the first time of my life, I abandoned this dream and I abandoned this identity. And who am I without short track speed skating? It makes me scared. And all kinds of questions came up to my mind. Because 
what should, shall I do? And what if I change completely? Would my boyfriend leave me? Well, however, I knew it was the best thing to do because my intuition told me I should stop. And yeah, actually, it was the first time I took the step into the big unknown. And I, for the first time, I took the courage to stand up for myself. And believe it or not, but since that, that moment, beautiful things have happened. I got the opportunity to produce a documentary and a book about my struggles during my way to the Olympics and about my journey to find my true self again. And with this, I also wanted to inspire and help other people by building my own platform. And that platform was for, for former athletes. And the funniest part of all of this, I got, well, when I quit squatting, I went to the Olympics. And not as a skater, but as a crew of the Holland Heineken House. And there was actually a, an award uh, which I won for my documentary. Uh, it was during the world's biggest film festival in the field of sport. So actually all kind of great things came up to my mind. And so actually, after all, I went to the Olympics and what I've learned from all of this, I, well, nothing was standing in my way but my own self, my own ego. Other expectations uh, from others were more important to me than just be my authentic you. Some of you might also struggle with finding your dreams or, or your goals, but don't fool yourself. Try to, to, or dare to listen to your intuition and don't be afraid for the big unknown. Like Deepak Chopra ever said, you must find a place inside yourself where nothing is impossible. Now, without having, uh, without having reached my dream and my former goal, I can distinguish myself from others and I can be successful as well, since I accept who I am and I have no barriers anymore to be my authentic you or my authentic me. <laughs> and, well, therefore, my message to you would be, not everything in life happens the way you dream it, you hope it, or you want it. But if you experience the challenges seem to stop you, don't fight against them. Dare to listen to your intuition and embrace your failures. Then beautiful things will happen. Thank you very much.